Alzheimer's research, something for Blaney that hits close to home. His grandpa had Alzheimer's, and so it's for charity for Alzheimer's research, uh, which is a cause close to him and to our CEO, Seth. Yeah, and that Bronco goes up for sale tomorrow. I asked if there's a price they're hoping for. The team there just said a lot. But guys, I got to tell you, look at this. Such a cool event. So many cool cars here. I might be in the market. Who knows? Maybe I'll come back to the station today with something new. We'll see. John, did they catch the javelinas that were loose in there? I, I just got to ask. You know, I was told that they were able to, to wrangle them into one area. They haven't been found yet, but there were potentially two javelina inside the main tent here. We haven't seen them. We went hunting for them after our hit last hour, but so far so good. But hey, they might pop out a little later once people get in here. We'll see. Well, if I see one running behind you, I'll let you know. You can tackle it. Oh, Thank geez. you, John. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Better you Thank than you, me, John, John Genovese. Thank you for that. This is awesome. Uh, it's time to join the resistance. The newest ride at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge officially opens at Disneyland this morning. The Rise of the Resistance is actually Disney's longest ride ever, around 18 minutes. Oh my. A similar version opened at Disney World last month. Next on ABC 15 Mornings, even more reason to make the workplace more inclusive. What the government is offering companies to make sure nobody gets left behind. Plus, it is not the kind of church service One Valley couple was planning to have going on near their wedding. And now they're making some last minute changes because of Kanye West. U.S. officials are now confirming some American troops were injured in Iran's missile attacks on a military base in Iraq last week. Eleven service members had to be flown out of Iraq, some of them suffering traumatic brain injuries. Because of HIPAA laws, officials can't give any more details on the injuries. A coalition of 15 states in New York City is suing the Trump administration over a new rule that could cause hundreds of thousands of people to lose their SNAP or food stamps benefits. The rule just proposed in December tightens the work requirements for food food stamp eligibility. Millennials may be the biggest culprit when it comes to spreading the flu. A new survey from the American Academy of Family Physicians found more than half of people in their 20s and 30s did not get the flu shot this year. Wash your hands, everybody. Wash your hands. All right, watching the roadways right now. Overall, our flows look really great. We'll look at those in a second, but I want to give you a heads up of some of the weekend construction I talked about earlier. If you're traveling on the 101 between State Route 51 over to Cave Creek, just in the westbound direction, you're going to see this narrowed down to three lanes. You're already used to seeing construction there, but just putting it on your radar, this is going to start Friday through Monday, and then again in overnight hours starting next week as well. This is also going to close that northbound ramp of State Route 51 to transition into westbound loop 101 and we already know that that can be a congested ramp anyway so use the surrounding surface streets to get by maybe re-enter near cave creek or 7th street instead if you want to go surface street level at union hills all the one that we're talking about here is on i-17 now it's the same kind of deal you're going to see it narrowed down to one lane but it's going to be at two different spots so one's going to be at rose garden and then the other one's going to be at happy valley and they're really short windows of time so the one that's closer to happy valley is going to be on monday morning and that's between 1201 and 5 a.m the other one rose garden is going to be on sunday from 10 to 11 59 p.m so they're just going to shift on up now for what things look like right now i-10 eastbound is a little slow once you get closer to avondale but by loop 101 you're back to green flows it's a little Little stop and go once you get closer to the stack, but mini stack all clear. East Valley showing all green flows right now, especially on US 60, Loop 202s, even South Mountain looking good so far this morning. Desert drive time shaping up to be very quiet as well. Hopefully it stays this way and hopefully the sun is going to be out, Iris. Oh yeah, today we will see more of that sunshine. It was a little gloomy yesterday. As expected, those clouds moved in. They stuck around for most of the day, but this morning we're waking up to mostly clear conditions here as you get ready to step outside. That's also making for a colder morning in the valley with temperatures down into the 40s across most of the Phoenix metro area. Now to our north and west, we do have some high clouds in western Arizona. That does include spots like Lake Havasu and Kingman and then the north rim of the Grand Canyon getting a little bit of that light snow could accumulate to around an inch there. We've got a cold front that's bringing those snow showers up north. Areas north of that I-40 corridor could see a few light snow showers here through the morning. But as you watch Futurecast here with me, by 11 o'clock this morning, we're already clearing things out 
out in spots like Flagstaff, even by the Grand Canyon. Window Rock may still have a few snow showers by that point in the day, but then this afternoon it's clear statewide. And for the valley, we'll keep those mostly clear conditions around all day today. We'll see mostly sunny conditions on Saturday too. Here's lunchtime. Very nice looking day across the state on Saturday and then on Sunday we'll see more clouds, but I don't think we're going to get any rain this weekend. So we're looking at dry conditions with high pressure building back in. Now as that cold front swings across, it's been really increasing those wind speeds across northern Arizona as I told you it would. Right now those winds sustained at 20 mi 29 miles an hour in Flagstaff. At one point we were seeing gusts close to that 50 mile an hour mark. Flagstaff, those wind gusts peaking so far at around 37 miles an hour here at this hour. Still breezy to windy in spots like Sholo and Heber, also in Window Rock and at the Grand Canyon. Watch wind speeds as we look at future casts. We will continue to feel those breezy to windy conditions across northern Arizona through the morning. Then as we approach lunchtime, still breezy, but those wind speeds starting to drop. This afternoon, look for lighter winds across the state. And again, for the valley, I think those winds stay light, stay light overall. Right now, they've dropped to below 5 miles an hour. Our temperature at 47 degrees in Phoenix, down to 31 in Flagstaff. Staff, but it feels much colder with those winds. Keep that in mind as you get ready to step outside. Crank up the heat in your car. You'll need it up north. This afternoon, highs will be a mild to cool across the state. 40s to 50s up north. 54 for a high in Kingman. Payson, you hit 52 today. 47 for a high in Shello. And Phoenix topping out at 65 degrees. With those high temperatures across the valley, reaching the mid-60s today. So cool air is moving in with this cold front. And even though today we'll see more sunshine than what we saw yesterday, Again, our temperatures will be pretty close to where we ended up yesterday with those mid 60s. Then tomorrow the 70s are back low 70s on Sunday too. In fact, Sunday a little warmer up to 73 degrees, mostly cloudy for your Monday with highs in the low 70s too. I'll break down that hour by hour temperature forecast next. Ah, oh, we love it. Iris, thank you. 618. The government now offering a $100,000 prize for businesses that can come up with ideas to incorporate people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Officials say companies who employ people with disabilities disabilities report higher revenue, bigger profit margins, better morale and greater retention rates. A lot of people with autism also enjoy detailed work, so they really like to be strategic. They like to uh, have things a certain way and have a certain schedule. So that some of the repetitive jobs that might be tiresome to other individuals would actually be more satisfying to young adults with autism. People with developmental disabilities are often successful with hands-on job training and getting paired with a peer for guidance, but some employers need education about setting appropriate expectations. A valley couple spends more than a year planning their wedding only to find out Kanye West is going to be performing next door. Rachel and her fiance Marvin met at ASU and they're getting married tomorrow at the Newman Center. Well, they are making some last minute changes because it's close to Sun Devil Stadium, which is where Kanye is going to be holding one of his church services. The bride to be says that they had to get a shuttle service to help guests avoid all that traffic. People will park there and they will take the shuttle uh, to here and back. And so like hopefully like that will alleviate some of the stress. Yeah, well, the couple also says that they May no, may no longer be able to take their photos at Old Main as they had planned because, of course, they have to avoid the crowds. A lot of people expect it out there. For oh, that certainly. Event. Yes, they are. Hey, Demi Lovato's comeback is about to get even bigger. The pop star announcing she will be singing the Star Spangled Banner at Super Bowl 54 on February 2nd. Lovato has not performed since 2018 when she was hospitalized for a drug overdose, but since then she's been to treatment and opened, about, opened up about her sobriety. Lovato is also set to perform at the Grammy Awards later this month. Yeah, we're excited for that. Good for her. Coming up, one candidate trying to keep his job, another trying to get his old job back. But who's bringing in the most money in the Maricopa County Sheriff's race? Are you like me? You love your pets. You just don't want to wear the fur. Well, today we're testing out a product that's supposed to remove all of that pet hair. So I'm going to let you know if this is bull or no bull. We are waking up to colder temperatures on this Friday morning. We don't have that thick blanket of clouds we started out the day with yesterday. So it's like somebody stole that blanket off your bed. You're feeling the chill and you'll notice it when you step outside. 39 degrees currently in Buckeye. We've got temperatures in the low 40s Chandler in, and also in Gilbert and the Southeast Valley. 43 in Gilbert, Queen Creek and in the Santan Valley with 40 in Chandler, 44 in Tempe. It's 47 in Anthem, 43 in Surprise and 42 in Levine. So as you 
get ready to maybe wake up the kids, get them ready for school. Know that today will be colder as you head outside this afternoon, looking for a cool day with a high of 65, but we will see more sunshine. It's just that we've got a cold front that's going to reinforce that cooler air. So even though today will bring more sunshine than what we saw yesterday, our temperatures will still only make it into the mid 60s. We'll see that high of 65 degrees in that four o'clock hour, then dropping back down into the low 60s by 6 p.m. Tomorrow, though, the 70s are back and look at this weekend 70 tomorrow, partly cloudy and 73 on Sunday with overnight low temperatures in the 40s warm on MLK Junior Day as well with those temperatures in the low 70s. We'll talk about the high country snow and winds that I'm seeing right now in just a bit. Okay, Iris, thank you. Let's face it, pet parents. It can be rough when you love your mutts and you want to get rid of that extra fluff. <laughs> Well played. Our smart shopper Chelsea Davis is testing out a product to see if it can really remove all of that cat and dog hair. Is pet hair taking over your life? Well, stress no more. Now, introducing the Chomp Chomp Roller. It picks up hair in seconds. The commercial makes it look easy. Just run the Chomp Chomp Roller back and forth across the fur. It picks up like a handheld vacuum or lint roller, but this one is reusable. Then when you're done, open the back to empty it out. Over 2,000 reviews on Amazon. That number, even higher now. Over 7,000 ratings, giving it about four and a half stars. And that's where anchor Nick Saletti bought one for his furry family member, Larry. Nick has used it about three or four times with simply positive results. You're instructed to roll it back and forth in shorter motions, and it will sound a little loud since the roller only rotates halfway. Chom Chom Roller CEO Aaron Muller explains. Because what happens is when you go like this and that, it creates a static electricity, and then what happens is it puts the hair into this compartment here, and this is where you clean it all out. I tested out the Chom Chom Roller on half of Nick's couch, and in a matter of 45 seconds, it picked up most of the fur. It retails at $24.95, so Larry, where does it rank on our bowl or no bowl meter? I'm going with no bowl and giving it a round of applause. If you want to try the Chom Chom Roller since it's ferocious against pet hair, go to abc15.com slash smart shopper. So cute. We had too much fun with that. We did. We? So did hey, Larry did too. Larry was just loving it. Well, and also on the shield, you probably noticed this as well in the packaging. They have this 100% guarantee shield. So it's supposed to be really great for people who have pets. Four and a half stars, like we mentioned before, but it doesn't require batteries nope. or anything. It's eco friendly. So you don't need an extra power source to get it done. Just a little arm power. Well, and you if, you, if you have pets, dogs, cat, whatever, you know that pet hair on a couch, uh, it's just such a yeah. pain. So yeah. to finally find something that works it's is... It's a good job. It's amazing. Yeah, it's pretty good. I liked it. I'm impressed, Chelsea. Yeah, you Thank can come you. over and use it anytime you want on my couch. <laughs> you got you did it. A, you did a better job than I did. It's my pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Chelsea. So saving the most money when filing taxes, coming up, Joe lets you know how uh, may even be able to file for free. Plus, a Valley teen in the ICU after getting shot with rubber bullets. Phoenix police now admitting they had the wrong guy. This is ABC 15 Mornings. All right, we say good morning on this Friday, just about 630. Thanks for joining us. I'm Nick Saletti. And I'm Justin Pizzera in for Kaylee O'Kelly, who is enjoying a weekend off apparently so uh iris is here though she's yes. been busy in the forecast center hey you know we had some clouds that we started out with yesterday but this morning those clouds are gone off to a chilly start but i know you guys are ready for the weekend those oh, are yeah those are we're ready for the weekend faces How could, I was think. that easy to read <laughs> it, was, it was obvious <laughs> and i know so many of us ready to get the weekend started so let's talk about today because of course we've got to get through one more work day right temperatures as you step outside in the low to mid 40s in spots like glendale goodyear and chandler mesa though you're checking in at 47 and 47 in Phoenix as well. But it is cooler than it was yesterday as we start the day with mostly clear conditions. Now, despite that chilly start, know that we will eventually make it into the 60s this afternoon. But today we're going to keep those cool temperatures around. Yesterday's high temperature ended up in the mid 60s because we had those clouds around. Today, I think we see more sunshine, but we also have a cold front moving in. So that's going to reinforce that cooler air, keep it around, keeping our temperatures confined to the mid 60s. We'll say confined 
started right near normal, not too far off. 65 degrees for a high. Then we've got 70s for this weekend. I'll show you how those temperatures are climbing through the weekend. And of course, Chelsea, I've been talking about a little bit of snow in northern Arizona. I'll show you where that is on Desert Doppler radar. Ooh, can't wait. Thanks, Iris. In case we want to make a trip up, it's going to be so fun. Watching the roadways here, Friday light. No issues on our Valley freeways right now. We're looking at our normal delays if you travel on I-10. Closer to Avondale, closer to the stack. I-17 in the southbound direction, starting around Bell, and then a little stop and go through the stack, a little slower around the Durango curve. North stretch here, pretty quiet. Normal delays on the 101 eastbound between I-17, and they lighten up before you get to the 51. East Valley, I-10, a little slow around the Broadway curve, but in a few minutes, I'll break down those weekend construction areas. Chelsea, thank you. A Valley teen in the ICU for five days after Phoenix police admit they misidentified the 19 year old as a suspect in an armed robbery and shot him with rubber bullets. Police say a week ago, Dion Humphrey was walking near 7th Avenue and Southern in the same area where a 66 year old was shot and robbed the day before. Officers say Dion matched the description of a suspect, so they fired a flashbang. But Humphrey says he didn't know it was police because they were in an unmarked car, so he took off running because he was scared. Officers then shot him in the chest with rubber bullets, thinking he was trying to get away. They were extra aggressive. They were definitely extra aggressive. Uh, my son may weigh 85 pounds. There's no reason to shoot him and tase him and then tackle him to the ground. Phoenix police say they were looking for Humphrey's half brother, but the family tells us he hasn't lived with them for over a decade. They're now planning to explore legal action. Just in police now telling us that they believe an 18 year old woman was murdered. Her body found in an office building near 43rd Avenue and Indian School yesterday. So a cleaning crew noticed a really strong odor coming from a room inside that building. Police say the room was rented and they're now talking to the man who is leasing it. He is considered a person of interest, but his name has not been released at this point. A man found dead in a car riddled with bullet holes, and now we're getting a look at new surveillance video from a neighbor capturing the moment the shooter opens fire. Yeah, police called out to that scene near 24th Street in Shea after reports of all that gunfire. The man who shared that video with us says that he actually thought it was fireworks. I was sitting at the computer working. I I thought it was a strange time for fireworks, but that's uh, it was very rapid. Well, police say they are now learning an SUV was seen chasing this car earlier in the morning before those shots were fired. No suspect has been arrested, but anyone with information is asked to call Phoenix police. Today, Stephen Jones must report to the Coconino County Jail. He pleaded guilty last week to manslaughter and aggravated assault charges for that deadly shooting at NAU back in 2015. Jones insisted he fired in self-defense. He is scheduled to be sentenced next month. As part of his plea deal, he faces between five and 10 years in prison. 634, the fight over ride sharing at the airport far from over this morning. The city has weighed in. Now the governor is weighing in. And now the Arizona Attorney General just delivered his opinion. Carla Navarrete is live from Sky Harbor with the latest for us. A lot of folks watching this one, Carla. Yeah, and the Attorney General Mark Burnovich says he plans to file a special action with the Arizona Supreme Court. That is supposed to happen sometime today. He says he wants the judicial system to strike down that policy that was passed by the Phoenix City Council back in late December of last year. Now, the state attorney general thinks the city leaders are basically trying to rewrite Arizona's constitution. He thinks the ordinance should not take effect. It's supposed to begin in two weeks, and that ordinance will raise the cost for curbside pickup and drop off fees by four dollars. Now Uber and Lyft plan to stop service to the airport. They've been saying that for a while. Now in Bernovich's opinion, city council members are going against the voters who put them in office. Literally what you have is the city council of Phoenix basically gambling with tens of millions of hardworking taxpayer dollars. Now, Bernovich will file that special action case with the Arizona Supreme Court. What will happen next? And Phoenix City Council members will have their chance to argue their case in front of the Arizona Supreme Court. Now, again, it's important to mention that this new fee affects thousands and thousands of passengers who take Uber and Lyft. One out of every 10 cars that comes through Sky Harbor is a rideshare company. That's all I have from Sky Harbor. Back to you guys in the studio.
Carla, thank you. The FBI is changing its policy when it comes to local elections. The agency says it will now notify officials when there is some sort of a breach. In the past, only local government officials would be alerted to attacks. That meant state officials in charge of election results could be left in the dark, not knowing the election had potentially been compromised. Under the new policy, the FBI will notify local and state officials at the same time, and this will happen in person. Former Maricopa County Sheriff Joe Arpaio is ahead of all of the other Republican candidates in fundraising in the sheriff's race. The 87 year old raised about $350,000 from October to December and reported a total of about $657,000 in campaign funds at the start of 2020. So current Sheriff Paul Penzone raised $150,000 in contributions the last quarter of 2019 and has about $270,000 in campaign funds. Well, some new canines are hitting the streets. This is Gilbert's new police dog Vegas. He's beginning uh, to train to become a new drug detection dog and Phoenix police also have two new canines. They are from Slovakia and they're also brothers. They posted this Facebook live introducing us to the 14 month old dogs who will spend the next month <laughs> getting to know their handlers. Yeah, certainly got a lot of energy there. Closing loopholes in a three year old law that was supposed to guarantee help for firefighters in their time of need. Senators Heather Carter and Paul Boyer just introducing a new bill which adds breast cancer and ovarian cancer to the list of covered cancers and removes loopholes allowing local governments to deny these benefits. In this new legislation, we are making the cancer presumption irrebuttable. That means they will no longer be denied. We want to make sure that we're protecting those that protect us. Carter says the bill gives firefighters the time and space to fight the disease without having to deal with government bureaucracy. The measure does have strong bipartisan support right now. January 27th is a little more than a week out. It's the first day the IRS will accept tax returns. On new this morning, Joe lets you know what free options you have if you're looking to maybe get a jump start on filing. <laughs> If you make less than $69,000 a year as an individual or total when filing jointly, the IRS and the state of Arizona offer free filing options, although each partner has their own eligibility requirements. For example, for H&R Block, you have to meet the income requirement and be under the age of 51, active duty military, or qualified for a tax income credit. To help sort through this, the IRS offers a free online lookup tool. You can plug in your age, income, and answer a few other questions to be matched with the best filing option. If you make more than $69,000 a year, you may be able to file for free through MyFreeTaxes.com. It's a service offered by United Way. There's no income limit this year, but only works with regular wage income. If you made money driving for Uber or Lyft, those forms are not included. If you're in military, active duty, guard, or reserve, you can use MilTax, a service provided by the Department of Defense. It's provided free with no income or tax form restrictions. Lastly, there are ways to get free in-person tax help. If you make less than $56,000 a year, live with a disability, or speak limited English, you can search for volunteer income tax assistance. There are locations across the state. Double check the link. These services also offer versions that cost, like TurboTax, being sued for allegedly making it difficult to access their free service. Go to abc15.com slash let Joe know for links to more information. I'm Investigator Joe Ducey. If you've got a problem, let me know. Joe, thank you. A reminder, if you do file on the first day, the IRS says don't expect that refund right away. They say I expect it maybe around mid-February or so. Well, coming up, as history is made in our nation's capital, look at what is next in the impeachment and whether new witnesses may be called in a Senate trial. Plus, brewing up some new job opportunities, Starbucks unveiling a plan to open new stores in lower-income neighborhoods. ABC 15 Desert Drive Time, sponsored by Accident Law Group. Welcome back, everybody, watching these roadways for you. And overall, this is a wide view, and we're still looking at a lot of green out there. It's pretty quiet, and hopefully it stays that way. Now, I want to go over some of the weekend construction that we're going to see. On the 101, if you're traveling in the westbound direction between State Route 51 over to Cave Creek, you're going to see it narrowed down to three lanes. Lots of construction in that zone anyway, but that's going to last Friday through Monday, and then possibly again in the overnights the next week. This is going to shut down that northbound ramp to Loop 101 in the westbound direction. So use those surface streets, and then you can reconnect onto the 
101. I-17 is going to see some restrictions as well, narrowed down to only one lane. That's going to happen at Happy Valley and also at Rose Garden. So you're going to see those mostly in the nighttime or overnight hours. If you're traveling on the East Valley or east side of town, US 60 eastbound ramp to northbound Loop 101 will be closed. So you're going to have to exit near McClintock, go up to Southern, hop back onto the 101 there. That should be an easy one for you. Then if you want to continue eastbound on US 60, you're going to see it narrowed, <coughs> excuse me, down to two lanes all the way over to Crisman. That's going to last Sunday night and then in the overnight hours all the way through Thursday. Now, if this isn't where you travel at all, there are some other minor restrictions on on and off ramps near Loop 101 and Warner and then also I-10 near Avondale. Getting rid of that box though, we're still looking at mostly great flows right now. If you're traveling on the 202 South Mountain, you are good to go. The rest of your commute will show you some desert drive times in a few minutes, but right now we'll check in with Iris. Don't you just love Fridays, Chelsea? Yeah. Let's, uh, let's talk about that forecast here as you maybe get ready to step outside this morning. Know that we are not seeing those clouds that we started out the day with yesterday. So that's the difference. Yesterday we told you about the clouds. This morning we've seen that clearing, mostly clear conditions. And out to our west, we do have a few thin, we do have rather a few thin high clouds that have been moving into western Arizona. And I think as we go through the day today, we'll see some passing clouds across the valley. But all in all, it's going to be mostly clear here in the Phoenix area with just some passing clouds at times. Now to our north, I have been watching a few snow showers, mainly along the north rim of the Grand Canyon. This is happening as a cold front swings in. It's also the reason we're getting some strong winds up north. Those snow showers not going to add up to much. You may see a few flurries in the Flagstaff area here this morning, but I don't expect any major impacts again as that cold front swings across. And that's what you'll notice on future cast. That cold front will swing across that northern portion of the Grand Canyon is where we've got the best chance for snow this morning. A few flurries in spots like Flagstaff and then as that cold front moves east, a few snow showers out near Window Rock by mid morning. But then this afternoon you'll see on future cast that we are clearing out across the state and for the valley aside from some passing clouds at times expect mostly sunny conditions. Dry weather for us today and dry as we go into the weekend too. high pressure will be building in. Now we'll see warmer temperatures to the weekend. We're also going to see a few more clouds, especially by Sunday. It'll become partly cloudy. Then Monday you can see all of that cloud cover across our state.